the bulletin says that I am going to be preaching on Matthew 18, but I'm not. I'm going to be preaching on Philippians 1, beginning with the 21st verse. So listen now for God's word to us. For to me, as Paul says, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious God, you have a message for each of us this morning. Allow my lips to be your words and my thoughts to be your thoughts. And Lord, give us all open hearts and minds for you that the Holy Spirit may touch each of us this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning, we're going to look at faith and emotions. How is our faith impacted by our moods? Do we approach God differently depending on how we feel about our situation? Is faith based on an emotional state? Listen to this story. Jane woke with a start. The clock read 6.15 a.m. It can't be 6.15. I have a plane to catch. I'm sure I set the alarm for 5.15 last night. Even before her mind was fully engaged, Jane was in the shower. Lord, why today? Why do you let these things happen on days when it matters most? Fortunately, Jane had packed a carry-on the night before and set out her clothes for the morning, so getting ready for her trip was mindless. After showering, she checked off the things she needed to do, brush her teeth, apply her makeup, dry her hair, and get dressed. Running downstairs with suitcase in hand, she grabbed a bottle of water and a breakfast bar. Making her way to the car, she sighed, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm glad that you gave me the foresight to get all the packing done last evening. Within 30 minutes, Jane was pulling into the parking garage at the airport. Lord, now I need your help. Help me to find a spot right away. I don't have time to ride around this garage looking for a place to park my car. Rounding the bend on the first level, Jane slammed on the brakes. She almost hit the little car that was backing out of its spot. Whoa, that was too close for comfort, Lord. I'm counting on you to keep me safe. Jane pulled into the space, turned off the car, grabbed her bag, and ran to the terminal. As she approached the security line, she thought, thank you, Lord. I got the parking spot, and look, now I'm seeing a short line at the security. She sighed deeply and added, I think I'll make the plane. Note that in each emotionally charged segment of her morning, Jane waff waffled between blaming God and thanking God for her situation. Jane's emotions determined the strength of her faith in God's care. Maybe this example is stretching it a bit, but don't we find ourselves tested by circumstances that we face? When things are good, 
Our faith is strong. It's when we face turmoil or disaster that our trust in God wavers. Where are you, God? What's going on? Why is this happening to me? We find ourselves asking. This morning, our scripture reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, a letter that was written while Paul was under arrest in Rome. Paul was in chains because of his faith in Christ. Not only was he in prison, there was a good possibility that Paul might be put to death. This is Eugene Peterson's translation of what Paul wrote. Alive, I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his bounty. Life versus even more life. I can't lose. As long as I'm alive in this body, there is good work for me to do. If I had to choose right now, I'd hardly know which I'd choose. Hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better. But most days, because of what you are going through, I am sure that it's better for me to stick it out here. So I plan to be around a while. Companion to you as your growth and joy in the life of trusting God continues. Remember, Paul broke no laws. He was in prison because of his faith in Jesus Christ, period. Paul had every right to be discouraged and even angry, but that is not the case. If anything, Paul sounds excited. He saw himself as faced with two life-enhancing possibilities, and he really wasn't sure of which one he wanted more. Essentially, he said, I can't lose. If I die, I know I'll be in heaven with Christ. If I live, I will be able to accomplish much more for Jesus. Paul is a good role model for the need to be faithful in our trust of God in spite of what we might be facing in our daily lives. Now, many of us here have read Charlie Brown and Peanuts over the years. There can be important life lessons learned from that short cartoon. Maybe you've read the one where Lucy is philosophizing and Charlie is listening. As usual, Lucy has the stage delivering one of her lectures. Charlie Brown, life is like a deck chair on a cruise ship. Some place it so that they can see where they're going. Others place it to see where they've been. And some put the chair so they can see where they are at the present. Charlie Brown sighs and says, I can't even get mine unfolded. Most of us can identify with Charlie Brown at some level. Life gets rough and some of the choices we have to make are difficult. We feel as though we are between a rock and a hard place. Many times a strong argument could be made for each choice solution. This just adds to our troubles as we face the dilemma. Which choice is the better choice? As human beings, we look at a given situation and see it as it is, as it was, and as it will be. So when we make the choice, we do it by imagining the future, even as we see the present and remember the past. Daniel Gilbert, in his book, Stumbling on Happiness, explains that the greatest achievement of the human brain is the ability to imagine objects and episodes that do not exist in the realm of the real. And it is this ability that allows us to think about the future. Gilbert goes on to say that thinking about the future can create great anxiety, even as we plan for it. How many times do we fret over the possibility of an accident when our kids are driving in bad weather? Or how often do we worry about a follow-up appointment with the doctor? 
Do we find ourselves thinking about a future scenario where the doctor says, let's talk about the options. We look into the future so that we can make predictions about it. We make predictions about it so we can have a sense of control over our destiny. This desire to control is so powerful and the feeling of being in control so rewarding that we often act as though we control the uncontrollable. Let's think back to the Apostle Paul. We see that he was different than most. Though he too looked to the past, the present, and the future for his predicament, he did not care to be in control. Paul believed that his life began again when he met Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul also believed that salvation, eternal life with Christ, would be the end of life reward. Between these two points, the birth of his life with Christ, his past, and his eternal life with Christ, his future, Paul's daily living, present life, was dedicated to serving Christ. Paul did not worry about his life or his death. In serving Christ, Paul realized immense joy and great satisfaction. We all have different thoughts within us, different emotions that may pull us in the wrong direction. Some are loud, some are persuasive, and a few are quite convincing. If we listen long enough to these thoughts, we may be tempted to throw our faith out the window, to focus on our wants and our needs, to choose something that may seem the best for us for the moment. Initially, it all may be wonderful, serene, even seemingly perfect. But ultimately, we will find ourselves disappointed and disillusioned. The excitement fades and happiness erodes. Our perspective on life must be on the eternal. It may be tempting to buy into the emotional state of the world. Grab, grab it while you can. Take care of number one. Climb the ladder of success no matter who, when you, who you step on. But that will not bring us happiness, eternal happiness. If we truly want lasting joy, we must put God first. Like Paul, we may face tough moments, but we'll never regret it. Max Lucado, in his book, And the Angels Were Silent, writes, we can't choose the weather. We can't control the economy. We can't choose whether or not we are born with a big nose or blue eyes or lots of hair. We can't even choose how people respond to us. But we can choose where we will spend eternity. The big choice God leaves to us. The critical decision is ours. Remember Paul's challenge. Live in such a way that you are a credit to the message of Christ. Friends, we need to make only one critical decision. We need to choose Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we are grounded in Christ, no matter how we feel or what we face, our faith will remain strong and we will experience the joy of the Lord. There will be no reason to worry about the past, the present, or the future. Like Paul, we must give glory to God for the gift of life, the life we have lived, the life we are living, and the life we will live with Christ for all eternity. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come here today because we do believe. But help our belief to strengthen. Help our belief to go deeper. And then give us an excitement about going out and telling others the good news of the gospel so that others too may look forward to life, life eternal with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.